What is up guys, it's TDS Craig here, and I have another tutorial to bring you guys, this is tutorial number two, and what I'm going to teach you how to do is, minimize this bitch, alright, I'm going to teach you guys how to make something like this. Alright, so basically what this is, is um, a yin yang logo that I got off Google Images and I extruded using Element 3D and then I made nice shadows so you can see here how it interacts with the with the floor there so it's not just a random 3D thing floating in the air not interacting with the environment that's the idea is to make it look like it fits the scene better so with shadows it'll do that so let's go ahead and start with this alright so uh, just to make it a little bit more entertaining let's do something that's not a yin yang logo logo so I picked this found it on Google images typed in logo black and white got it all right and what you want to do is go to layer and auto trace now you're gonna get these settings and you don't have to copy these but you're gonna want to mess with threshold and corner roundness if you have a more intense logo like this you're gonna want to um, zoom in and get your edges and make sure they're looking good all right so what you're gonna do here is copy and paste this entire layer into your composition here. Now, this composition has a cinematic that I got on Xbox and I tracked it. So there's a null, camera null right there. And I tracked it with Camera Tracker 1.0 if you want to know how I do it. Um, that's because I have CS5. Now, what I did was I duplicated the cool logo thing that we had here. Then if you go in your masks, I took the masks and I split them up into two different layers. So there's layer one and layer two. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a solid and um, we'll just name it element because this is the layer we're going to put element 3D on. Alright, so there's your element 3D. Now, what we're going to do is go under custom layers, alright, and we're going to put those masks that we made from the auto trace into the custom layers here. So, uh, path 1, put number 1, and path 2, put 2. Now, if you're just beginning to do this, I would recommend just keeping all the masks on one layer. The reason I broke it up is so I can put different materials on them. Um, so we're going to go ahead and extrude. And we're going to get this looking thing. Um, it's alright. looks alright. Uh, some edges are rough, but that's okay. It'll happen. Um, this isn't going to be perfect. Alright, now duplicate that extrusion model and put it on group 2 and then under custom path here put it on custom path 2 and you'll get your other mask out alright so now you have your two masks and go ahead and click OK and get out of that now what you're going to do is go under group 1 and we're going to go ahead and position this uh, we're, going to want to, we're going to want to actually let's just size it down first that'll help us Size it down to like three. Just get it real small. Um, the skull's really up in our face. <laughs> let's get this guy staring at us. Let's get him out of the way. So let's just work with the uh, outside here. The outside frame. Let's just make that look good in the scene. Let's like position it. All right. So uh, if you work left to right here, you can let's get it actually off the ground some. And then you're going to want to keep clicking through here to position this. Alright, so that looks good. Looking good. Looking like it's a little bit too far now. Uh, you're going to want to bring it out towards the screen. Now that's looking good. Okay, now if we just bring this size down to a 2, might even want to come out a little bit farther now. Mm -hmm. Now I'm bringing it out to like 100. I swear my phone goes off. It's going to go off every single tutorial I ever do. All right, so now that looks that looks all right. Um, looks like it's tracked. Well, I mean it is tracked, but I, you want it to be positioned correctly. All right, so now all you're gonna do here is, since I have version um, 1.6 of Element, I'm going to copy, and it's gonna copy this entire group one, and I'm just gonna freaking paste it on group two. So now the skull is following the exact same shit that the outside is, so it's perfect. Now just scale it down until it looks like it fits like it's supposed to. Alright, and it is. Cool. Looking good, looking good. Now, alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a third group. 
Now, this third group is basically going to be our way of shadowing the scene. All right, so under scene setup here, let's go under model browser over here, primitives, and we're gonna look for plane or disk or some kind of flat object. This this is probably the best bet. All right, so we have that now. Um, while we're in here, we might as well put some materials on these, make them look good. All right, under the pro shaders, I'm gonna use some metals. Uh, throw on something like that, and then like that. Hmm, be a little smoother, like that. All right, cool. All right, yeah. Shit, <laughs> I forgot about the whole plane thing I was doing. All right, so under the plane, um, make sure you put it on group three because that's the path our group we wanted to take. So now, go ahead and go to group three, particle uh, replicator here, and go ahead and uh, position it, just pull it down until you can see it, and then once you can see it, you should be able to rotate it around so it looks like it's just like a floor, basically. Okay, guys? All right, now it's, it's, it's acting like a floor for the most part. You might want to position it a little bit over there. Maybe a little bit over here. Cool. Looking good. Alright. Now that we have that, what we're going to want to do is go into our render settings and ambient occlusion. Now this is basically how we're going to get it to get shadows. Um, ambient occlusion. So now, in Elements, since there's no really like shadow engine, the way we're going to trick it into making a shadow is by making it cast um, shadows off different um, things. So we're going to make this flat plane here a floor, and we're going to push the light and shit onto it, and it's going to look all cool. So if you just crank up your intensity to 10, we'll start with that, and then we're going to start increasing the radius here. So you're going to start seeing the shadow underneath. All right, and then you're going to bring down. Mm, the The thing is you don't want to make it, you got to really pay attention to how you do the edges because you'll see here around the edges of the image it starts to get uh, pretty shadowy and we don't want that we just want it to show underneath the skull so there's certain ways of doing that and we don't want the radius up really strong either we want it to be like like that and you can turn that all the way off alright so now you're starting to see a shadow underneath it All right. Cool. So now what you want to do is go under scene setup and go to your plane. Go to the material that the plane's made of. Go all the way to the bottom to the advanced settings and uh, there's a setting right here called matte shadow. Turn that on. What that's going to do is turn the floor material off but leave the shadows that it makes. Alright. Now we have a scene with a really cool logo with the shadows being casted onto this floor. Now just to uh, make the scene look a little better Let's get some lights in here. All right, get a cool light. Throw up our black bars. Put our color correction on. Our enhance layer, and the light above the screen that uh, Hink taught everyone how to do. Uh, shout out to him. He helped me out a lot. So there's that. And now this is looking pretty cool. Um, now I mean that's pretty boring looking with the uh, logo just sitting still. So if we go into the world transform settings we can rotate everything without having to make each part separate now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these position settings and I'm going to make that the anchor point so I'm going to type in the exact same thing just to make a cool anchor point well uh, anchor point that's like legit right where it's sitting so it rotates about that point so now that we have that go to world transform and keyframe these all in the beginning here just make little adjustments see if we can't fuck with this shit ah now you see what's happening is our floor is moving and we didn't want that we want the floor to stay where it fucking was so hit group three under the uh, exclude so it uh, the world transform will transform everything but uh, group three so now we go here and we're gonna fucking spin this bitch how about we spin it in that direction alright cool and then just maybe little adjustments here and there. Cool. So now, if we take a little RAM preview, we're going to start to see what this is looking like. 
and the shadows that it's going to make. Now, um, I went really quick through the ambient occlusion just to get it over with, but just take your time on that part and you'll make it look um, pretty good. And you'll avoid getting the giant black areas around the edges of the floor because uh, that's what tends to happen if you do it real quick. Now, this is one of the methods for uh, shadowing with Element 3D and it works whenever the objects are really close to that floor layer. If they're not, um, there's another way to do it and I'll do that in another tutorial because I don't want to make these too long. Um, I'll probably make that in a couple days. It's it's pretty easy too actually. It's like a trick I'm, I do. Um, but uh, let's see what this looks like. See, and what's cool about this is it's as it spins the shadows cast as the, as the object gets close to the ground and it's pretty realistic looking. I like it. So that's how you do it. Um, this has been T.S. Craig, and I hope you guys are liking my tutorials. If you have any suggestions for anything, um, go ahead and uh, let me know in the comment section. Alright guys, peace.